Section 3, Troubleshooting Issues with Network Scanning. Welcome to the video, Monitoring NMAP Scans Using Verbose Logging. In this video, we will troubleshoot issues that may arise from scanning in a dual-homed environment, where both our wired and wireless interfaces are active. We'll also turn up the verbosity of logging on our NMAP scans so we can see what's happening in real time. And we'll also learn about debugging the output of our scans for extreme situations, such as if you think you've discovered a bug in NMAP itself. When you start scanning your own corporate network, or networks for other customers, you probably aren't going to be scanning just a single subnet, like we've been doing in some of our examples. You might be scanning hundreds or thousands of systems. So it's important to be able to monitor and troubleshoot scans and figure out if issues reside on the endpoints you're scanning or on your local system so you can identify potential issues. Let's start with an example and say that you've been hired to do some network scanning for a client and they want an inventory of all systems across their WAN as far as IPs, open ports, software versions, etc. So they give us a list of Class C subnets which we save into a file called subnets.txt. Great. Now before we conduct our scan, let's look at our interface list using nmap space tac tac if list. This command came in handy a few years ago where I was connected to the customer's network on my wired interface, but a Wi-Fi hotspot on my wireless interface. So to make sure I was doing all my scanning sourced out of the ETH0, or wired interface, I ran my scans like this. nmap space tac e eth0 and then my targets so this is a handy command syntax to know if you find yourself in a similar situation in the future okay let's get back to the task at hand and start scanning these subnets now to get the most thorough results possible let's do a full scan of all 65000 plus tcp ports which we'll specify by using TAC P plus the port range we want to scan. Note that there is not a space between TAC P and the first number of our port range. And then finally, we'll use the TAC lowercase i capital L flag and specify our list of subnets in the subnets.txt file. Okay, so great, the scan is running. At least we think it is, right? Without any output, it's difficult to say if the scan will finish in 10 minutes, 10 hours, or even 10 days. So let's cancel out of this scan with Control plus C and turn up logging so we have a better idea of what's going on behind the scenes. I'm going to run the exact same command again, but add a space tac v flag at the end. The v stands for verbosity. There are nine levels of verbosity which you can turn up by adding additional Vs, or you can use V plus a number, like V2, to call the level directly. It's good to know that the NMAP reference guide says verbosity levels greater than 2 really aren't that useful. But let's turn verbosity up to 2, so to speak, and see what happens. Now we get a much more lively status showing us what system is being scanned, the ports identified as being opened, and a rough approximation as to how long our scan will take to finish. I wouldn't plan your day around this time estimation necessarily, but it should at least give you an idea of whether or not the scan will finish in your lifetime. Now if for some reason verbose mode doesn't provide sufficient information for you, Debugging mode is available to flood you with even more data. Just like the TAC V option for verbosity, debugging is enabled with a command line flag TAC D and can also be called directly by calling the TAC D multiple times. Note that the folks at NMAP say debugging output is useful when you suspect you found a bug in NMAP or if you're just confused about what NMAP is doing and why. So be warned that the debugging feature is mostly intended for developers, and the debug lines aren't always self-explanatory. If you don't understand a line, your best options really are to look it up in the source code or request help via NMAP's mailing list. 
Since we're talking about getting help, if you're having an issue with Nmap or a specific scan, it's a good idea to periodically run an Nmap space TACV to see what version of Nmap is installed. I've got 7.60 installed here, and if we do a quick spot check on nmap.org, it appears that indeed the latest version is 7.60. Or if you're just not sure if the version you have is the latest, it doesn't hurt to run an apt-get update and apt-get upgrade to pull down all the latest package updates from the Kali repositories, because nmap updates will be included in that action.